This is the What's Neat Podcast, number 33. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and tonight we're going to talk about buses, locomotives, models, the internet, buildings, and just about everything that makes this hobby great. The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. Additional support is provided by Athern Trains. Check out all their new monthly announcements at athern.com and by Wathers. Everything you need to build a great model railroad. Visit their website at wathers.com and thank you for your support. This is the What's Neat This Week podcast, number 33 for April 21st, 2018. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat show at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And tonight we've got John Abaticola from TGS, I messed it up, TSG Multimedia. John makes magnificent videos and it's an awesome honor to have you on What's Neat with us tonight, John. Thank you. Thank you. I also have Michael Buddy here tonight, who's got a really cool thing to show off. And we've got my favorite, Daniel Coombs, all of our favorites. We've got a lot of guests in the room tonight, everybody. <laughs> Seems like every week, everybody's welcome, and we're going to be able to set up outside at some point. I'm glad you stayed wide. We've got a lot of new news on the show tonight, but most of it's going to be news that we're going to talk about right here on the table. But I want to start with Daniel Coombs. Daniel Coombs today earned his Eagle Scout Award, and I've got some footage of him accepting the award, but Daniel, it, it was a fight. You made it within three days of turning 18 years old, brother. Yeah, I did. Congratulations I did. on the Brotherhood of the Eagle Scout. Thank you, everyone. And to continue on now, Daniel, we've got some engines that I shot this week, and I know you know the name of a lot of these, but so check it, it out, man. The right. SD60E in yep. HO scale. So. We shot that outside. That's that new Atherin locomotive, and I yep. think Chris just brought that here. And what is this other one? We did an uh, F45, and this, well, the paint scheme on this was supposed to be the Southern Pacific Santa Fe merger, but of course in the 80s, some government regulations prevented that from happening. Okay. So these have got recently released with Tsunami 2 in them. This unit, uh, I think you'll screen capture it right here. Yeah, it's supposed a shot to represent the Santa Fe SF letter. Okay. And then there's another version with SP, I think they're also right. doing. I also shoot some shot some Sioux line locomotives because again the weather's been fantastic, so I'm able to get out and shoot every day now to start cranking out these uh, catalog shots. Yeah. And the Sioux line engine looked decent. That was an FP seven, I FP7. believe. FP seven. And then the last HO scale engine I shot this week was the STF forty two. Which is a rebuilt from the SDP-40F Amtrak locomotive, which of course many of you guys know that know about the engine. It, well, failed on Amtrak's part, so the, I think about 18 of them went off to Santa Fe and they got converted to the freight version until 2002, then they were retired. Cool, and then I did some N-scale locomotives this week too for all you N-scale guys out there. The F-45 from Atherin, that was in a cigar band paint scheme that I shot. I also shot these new SD-70s. And Thomas, we got a bunch of these SD-70s on the table. I believe these are new from Atherin. The N-Scale guys are probably going to get excited about it. I think the UP engine, John Abaticola, has got a review on that on his website. You can check that out. I also it's shot really nice the... nice engine. Yes, it is nice. I also shot the Santa Fe Red and Silver War Bonnet. That's the F... P45 in that modern scheme when they brought those back. And Mike, we shot some auto racks this week too. What are these N scale auto racks here? Uh, this is the Whitehead and Kales uh, auto pack and it's mounted on an F89 flat car by Bethlehem Steel. And it's the same model as Atherin had an HO scale, but they did a very fine job of it in N scale too. It's a nice model and it looks right. good with the sun rising through it. And now, how about that southern rack right here, Mike? What is yeah. that? This one represents one of the cars that they added the fiberglass sides to in an effort to combat uh, vandalism. It was semi-successful, at least it stopped rocks and bottles from the side, but they could still drop stuff on the tops of the vehicles. That's what led to the fully enclosed auto racks, but this was their first attempt. It looks like a nice model. Right. They did a really good job. Now, Mike, you brought a bus here tonight. Tell us about this gorgeous bus yeah. from Rapido. Yes. It's uh, the new... Uh, a what lighted version of trying to stick this battery on here, here but uh, let me see if I can get it. Right. Oh, there it is. But uh, the interior is lit, headlights t 
tail lights. It has got opposable steering. Yeah, there goes my wire. Maybe you can do it. But anyway, it's a, it, the uh, Bush had already done this model, but this Rapido model is uh, really a lot better. I, I thought the Bush was fine, but this is really good. What makes it better? So, well, the detail is a lot finer on it. Um, there's more separate parts. The interior is is better done than the Bush, and uh, the air conditioning on the back and the fans on top are, are a lot finer detail. So it's not motorized? Uh, not no, terrible. no. It's just thin. So Jason Schron actually bought one of these buses, and he mm -hmm. enjoys catting you around it. You his last I, name right. He, I think he's brought it to a couple train uh, shows, in fact, set it up uh, as a display. But mm -hmm. hats off to Rapido Train for making this beautiful bus. This is the bus that I would get on out here in South County and ride all the way down in the city right. so I could go to Woolworth. So I could buy my trains, and this was back in 1979, and they were just stopping that paint scheme, and they were starting to get with that more modern white with the red hockey stripes. That's right. Yes. Yeah, this is the the bus decorated with St. Louis by State Transit, which is the forerunner of the current day Metrolink, and uh, this is appropriate for the 70s into the 80s, but uh, the the uh, something. Yeah. Anyway, it's this is really a fine model, and and I highly recommend it. I got the lighted version. They also make an unlighted version, too. So what, 60s through the 70s? Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, John Abaticola, we're going to throw it back to you, brother. Now, you make a lot of pretty neat videos on this TSG Multimedia website. You say you've been doing it almost full-time for three years, but you've kind of been doing it for eight years. Tell us about what it is that you do to help promote the hobby, John. Well, TSG Multimedia actually was started in uh, 1998. Okay. And I started started making train videos in 2005 and uh, got more serious about YouTube around, I don't know, 2013, something like that. And I don't know, I'm just trying to show people what's cool, you know, and or, or as you say, what's neat. It is neat. And I get to see a lot of really cool layouts and a lot of really cool models out here and just trying to have fun and make the videos look and sound good. You do that. You do that quite well. I mean, they're very entertaining. They're always upbeat. You give out spikes to <laughs> manufacturers that have their products reviewed on your show. And my guess is nobody wants to get less than 10 spikes would be my guess. How does that work out for you? I'm, I'm also sure that most people would like to get 10 spikes. And I've always said that if people want to get 10 spikes, they can send a 10 spike model or put out 10 spike models. Because one of the great things that I'm trying to do in promoting the hobby is also keeping the manufacturers honest, you know. And it's easy enough to, to make something, I guess. They'll say it's hard to make stuff, and I'm sure it's hard to make stuff. But my point is that they bring stuff to the market, and they charge a premium for stuff. And when you charge a premium for stuff, I think that consumers have a reasonable expectation to have something that they can use out of the box, right? Right. So operational standards and stuff like good paint. You know, I have a whole list, which I should have brought my list out here, and I could show you every model's judged on the same list every time. Now, you, you don't just make uh, product reviews. What you do so well are your documentaries. Uh, the last layout. Um, actually, tell us some of the main characters in the last month that you featured on your website, two of the most known names in the hobby. Yeah, I think that the most known names that I've covered their layouts would be Jack Burgess, That's who it. has an amazing HO scale layout that represents the Yosemite Valley. Yes, he is so respected. And, yeah, and also Jim Diaz is another one that he has a WP layout from 1938. It's also really nice. I enjoyed yeah. that video, and I felt your pain. That oh. was that was <laughs> yeah. a tough edit, brother. You've got some hours in editing that piece because that's yeah, something you and I can directly relate to because we both oh, do our sure. own work. So yeah, hats off to you on things. that editing. You got everybody out there needs to check out this video. It is just absolutely. It's a documentary. It is put together very professionally. So yeah. There's yeah. another one I went to film. With, with another, another friend, friend of mine, of mine uh, recently, recently that's also well known in the railroading or model railroading circles. His name was Jim Vale, and he died fairly recently. He had an HO scale narrow gauge layout, which was done. It's just amazing. I mean, everywhere you look, there's 
so much density, detail density. I mean, you could look anywhere on this layout and there, you could look at it for 10 minutes and you still wouldn't have seen everything. And so it's really a challenge trying to film a layout like that because you have to light it. And some of the guys that were there, when because when I, when I come in, I bring lights. That's one of the things that a lot of people don't do. They don't use tripods and they don't use lights. And I'll never understand that. If you're going to make a video, you need tripods and you need lights. Yes, yeah, so that's the basics. Anyway, I had the lights on this uh, layout, Jim Vale's layout, and the people there were saying, I've been running on this, operating on this layout for years, and I've never seen this before. You know, whatever it was, something in the, that you couldn't see because the lights were kind of low, the regular lights that he had in there. So, so yeah, it's that'll be coming out probably in June, and that, that's one I'm really looking forward to. I look forward to that. When are you coming to St. Louis? Are you going to come to our prototype modelers meet and cover that show sometime? I, I didn't really think about coming out to St. Louis for that, but who knows? Maybe they'll get pick up a cheap airfare somewhere. somewhere. Come on, brother. I'll pick you up at the airport. we got a room upstairs you can stay in. Okay, I may take you up on that. All right, now, Thomas, you've been working on some road railers this week, Thomas. You brought a, you picked up a road railer train. I did. I got uh, I picked up from uh, one of the uh, Facebook uh, groups online, a gentleman was selling some road railers. I picked up about 30 of them, and, uh, you know, as last Sunday, and I think I brought them over here after yeah. that. I had to check them all out, make sure you know they run nice, and uh, decided to do a little uh, little detailing on them. They had some light weathering done to it, but I got some of your uh, paint, you know, ra uh, rail brown and uh, railroad tie brown, kind of mixed it together together to get that kind of steel rust I was looking for. So I kind of did a light weathering on the wheels and the trucks to give that just that little extra touch. No, it looked good. I enjoyed watching you do that. We had Brad Sloan come by this week. You'll remember him as a gentleman that helped me set up those Central Valley bridges on that water scene. But he brought over a model. I'm going to show this to you. It's called a brown hoist. Uh, and it's a kind of a crane. And if I got one picture that I found on the internet of it. And then now the plastic version that he's built. And he's got these black and white photographs set up behind it. What scale is that? This is HO scale, and wow. this is this is called 101 scratch building with regards to styrene pieces. He has literally so spent really hours assembling yeah. this neat little model that isn't any bigger than a couple of inches long. But I wanted to bring it up because he brought it over here this week, and it was really impressive to look at. So thanks, Brad, for bringing that. We had a train wreck on the layout this week. Uh, and you know what? Some wrecks look staged, and this one wasn't. It's not something that we really talk about very much, but when they're really that cool looking, it's <laughs> worth talking about. We've got the Wathers Paper Mill building here. Now, I finished this building this week, and I built the interior frame, the plywood structure bottom on it, and it came out to be a really nice photo prop. In fact, I used it when I shot the Atherin photographs with the NNS locomotives in them that you see right here. But this is a pretty neat building, and it's not just a paper mill the way I look at it. This could be literally any right. type of factory. You cut out the ends, and you could turn it into a diesel facility. There's a lot of potential on this. Mm -hmm. I used canned spray paint to sprain it. I used a roof brown on it, and I grabbed some reddish brick color at True Value. Because these days, the cans of spray paint spray quite fine. They're not like they were 30 years ago when you wouldn't get a good even coat. Mm -hmm. So I feel comfortable, plus now a lot of the Rust-Oleum paints are plastic compatible. So instead of pulling out the airbrush, I did a lot of the painting on this structure using just simple cans. And it turned out really nice. Now, Daniel, we've got this uh, Wathers turnout control system. Wathers is the sponsor for the What's Neat This Week podcast. Thank you very much, Wathers, for that. But you've got this switch system that you sent us last week, and we've set it up in a couple of separate situations here. We've built this diorama. And the reason I built this was I wanted to illustrate how the switch system could be used in a piece of foam the way I build layouts by stacking foam. And that's what you're familiar with because you've been watching us do it for six years in videos. So I thought it'd be important to show the compat compatibility of their system on a foam layout. So this is built just like my layout is, double stack, two layers of foam. And inside, after I pull off the fascia, you can see the Wather switch machine is worked into here. And I mounted it on a piece of plywood and routed out the foam and brought the plywood down into the foam so that it would match up with the surrounding track. And it worked out beautifully. So this will work in a concealed foam cocoon just like this. Plug it all in and put all the other uh, electronics to go with it. And it is plug and play. We've got one right here on the table. Oh, wait, to demonstrate it and it's all set up. Daniel, go ahead and push the button and well, show the servo moving. All right. 
So it's just a simple. And this is it. it. These are three components. There's a transformer plugged in on the floor for the system. Then there's a circuit board that allows you to connect multiple switch machines to it. It's all just plug and connect, no soldering. And when Daniel pushes the button, the colors change on the panel mount. So it's a very well thought out system. And actually, I'm sure there's a lot more to it. Lance Burton sent me a 20 page PDF document on it, which I have still got <laughs> to review. And it's not that it's complicated, but what happens is if you remember Lance Burton, he's been at Wathers for almost 30 years, maybe more than that, I don't know. But Lance is always the gentleman that wrote the captions for trackside photos or for their magic section. And if you read some of the stuff he can write about a single railroad photograph, you know he can tell a story about this. And what happens is you've got Lance, the creative writer, dealing with the technical guys that design stuff. And the beauty is Lance understands that language too. So they've written a very thorough instruction package for this that you can see on the Walther's website. And I'm going to check out that PDF and we'll follow up further as we do future things with this system. It looks pretty cool, servo-based. It's a neat thing. Everything I've seen on that is it's ingeniously simple and it's reasonably priced. Uh, as you know, me and Brad are working on a layout and I think, you know, once we've seen that came out, I think we've made a, a joint decision. That's, uh, that's what we're going to use because most of all of our mainline turnouts are going to be uh, remote control, remote switch controlled. And we think about going with the tortoise machines and stuff like that. And the ones with the decoders or there's another brand I can't think off the top of my head. But uh, I say, and then we saw that come out. And I'm like, wow, that is an ingeniously simple system. It's reasonably priced. And I look forward to getting some of those and tearing into them and do it. But I think that's what we're going to use on our layout when we, get, when we uh, keep building it. That's cool. Now, I want to bring in, who have we got here? Hold on. I want to talk John about a call and ask you real quick, what is your favorite What's Neat video? Have you seen the What's Neat videos at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine? Oh, I've watched a couple of them over the years, sure. Have you got a favorite? Well, my favorite really is the What's Neat This Week, episode 33. Oh, that's because you're in it. Uh, what, do you, what do you expect, man? That's all right, brother. You can watch it as many times as you want. It's free. It'll make our views look outstanding. Now, I want to talk, I want to bring in uh, Tyler Sneed and his dad, Dave Sneed. Tyler, come sit here in this chair. No, Mike, this is all figured out, brother. Just sit down right there. Now, Tyler is Daniel's friend. Tyler is 17 years old. He's an avid model railroader. He runs a business where he installs decoders. He showed me a locomotive tonight that he had put some LED lights on. You're seeing footage of that running right now on the layout. The lights are very impressive. But you've got, your forte is weathering, doing custom weathering for folks, and you also do custom electronic installs for people. Yes. How can people, con I know you do good work, and that's why I'm saying, how can folks contact you? Do you have a Facebook page if they need something installed in their trains? Yes, I do have a page. It's called uh, Sneed Custom Shops. Um, you can just contact me over there, send me a message, and like my page. And tell me about your passion for trains. Why do you like model trains? Is it because your father Dave was into trains? Well, I feel like we got into it around the same time. Um, I've been at it probably close to 12 years or so. And um, just kind of got into it one day and always had one that goes around the Christmas tree, you know, and always got interested for them and kind of grew ever since, you know. Yeah, same with yeah. me. I've been in it now for like 13 years, you know, six years old. Mm -hmm. You get your first train set, and of course, I was the biggest present in the loot, right. and it's like, I want to open up that, and of course, mom and dad are like, don't open, and then you're already opening it, right. and I look, Athern train set, oval track, Bach, and Bachman Easy Track pack with switches, you know, and right. then there's your start. Mm -hmm. Just can't get away from them since, huh? Yeah. No, it, and the illness caught me, but exactly. it's a good hobby. Yeah. Very good mm -hmm. hobby. It's the best hobby in the world. It is just, it's one of those hobbies where there's so many facets. There's so many professions. And I've heard this a million times, electronic, scenery, architecture. There, you can make a career out of the very facets, and people right. do. But it's really neat to see your enthusiasm, your youth, and the fact that you're a go-getter, that you'll take the risk of doing custom work like this where you know your reputation you know, rides on your work, and evidently it's good because I don't see people chasing you down here. So it's all that. good. 
Now, I think we're going to bring it almost to a close here. Um, I do want to give a shout out one more time to Jeff Otto at Oak Hill Monterey Road Track Supply. I want to thank Jeff Otto for all of his support that he gave us in the initial days of getting this podcast started. We really appreciate that from you, Jeff. And we will feature your products on the What's Neat This Week show over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine as you come out with new products. And I think we're going to close it out unless anybody else has got anything else they want to add tonight. John, add you're, you're, oh, go, ahead. Add something. go ahead. Shoot, brother. I, I've often heard from people around the hobby that the hobby is dying and it's too, you know, everybody's getting older and no one can afford to do anything. You know what? Tyler and Daniel sitting right there. Mm-hmm. It is not. The hobby is not dying. It's alive and well. It is absolutely What's dying online. is the way people have been doing things. And I don't think a lot of people realize this. It's social media now. Everybody's on social media who's doing stuff. So if all you do is sit around in a dusty old room, you're not going to meet anybody. It's changing. This hobby is about 10 years behind it's with changing. regards to the Internet. I must say that. Yeah. Just an observation. No, that's good. Kalmbach's yeah. got a new CEO. I don't know his name, but I do know they name they changed the name of the company. It's no longer, I believe, Kalmbach Publishing, but I think it's now called Kalmbach Media. So we can see that they're going to actually go more for the internet. I would bet would be my guess because that's where the youth modelers appear to be. Is they're all online. Pretty I've got to tell you, I know my right? son is all well, day long. You know, speaking of the internet and whatnot, I mean that's how I got to meet Ken. You know, I right. saw the what's right. neat. A video saw some of the amazing work that you do, and here we are. Like, hey, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah. and you know, and, and find out that you know he lives just right down the road, and by luck, here we are. Yeah, and thank you for walking into our life. As everyone is always welcome here, it's this show is your show. We make it for all of us. It's a show made by model railroaders. We're not professional journalists. We are modelers. We're in the trenches. We're cutting our fingers and getting our hands dirty every day in this wonderful hobby that we call modeling, model railroading. So with that, let's close out this show, number 33 podcast for April 21st, 2018. I've got John Abaticola from California. Thank you, John, for being on the show tonight. Thank you. I've got Michael Buddy, Daniel Coombs, our new Eagle Scout. Congratulations, Daniel. Thank you again. And I've got Tyler Sneed. Good luck yeah. in your adventures. Thank I look you. forward to meeting Appreciate and finding out it. what and else you thank do. thank you to all the live audience that yeah. has showed up tonight. Let's run some trains, I'll guys. Let's all go run some trains. All right, see you guys next time.